Welcome back to Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts for the conclusion of this Pro Series Round of Eight match in the Singles Elimination Tournament. Just to recap what happened in the first half of this round, Brian Kroll, who you can see on lane six, has got, he started with five marks in a row, five spares, 84 plus after five, and Brandon Marks over on lane five had a, uh, he had 62 with the ball working and he's filled that with eight, so he has a 70 half. Meanwhile, Mark Smith on lane three has 54 with the ball to roll and Dave Barber also with 54 with the ball and, and uh, both of those guys filled their spares with nine, so they both got 63. Actually, no, uh, Mark Smith had 51 with the ball, so no, he, he's got a 60 half. In any case, both Dave and Mark converted their spares. So at this point, Brian Kroll is pretty safe because he's got... Uh, he started with five spares in a row. Sean Baker, who is uh, going to be coming up for the second half of this segment, had 65 through 5, so he's, he's also in pretty good shape. And there's another spare by Brian Kroll. Let's take a look at this as he runs down the four horsemen on the right side. A little bit of a light hit, but the six pin comes off the wall to take out the ten. So this is an interesting format. It's a new one this year in the Pro Series in this particular event. Instead of having head-to-head -head match play elimination, each of the elimination rounds features the entire field bowling one string, and in each case the top half of the field moves on to, uh, to the next round. And there's a nine drop by Ryan Kroll. He just keeps rolling along. Brandon Marks with an 8 drop. <laughs> Brian last season was a member of the Thursday night league at the Fairway Sports World. And he was uh, an outstanding competitor in that league. Brandon Marks bowls out of Central Park Lanes in East Boston. Meanwhile, Dave Barber bowls out of Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn, Massachusetts, where he is also employed. There's another, just like a machine, uh, Brian Kroll keeps pounding the head pin and leaving himself good spare leaves. Not much drama involved with most of these spares, it's just couple of pins with a plank and there they go. Nothing to it. This, as I mentioned, is the first event of the 2011-2012 Pro Series season. Starts in August and runs... The season will run through May. The next event of the, uh, the season on the Pro Series will be on Sunday, September 18th at the Portsmouth Bowlerama in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. That particular event is a doubles knockout tournament, so if you want to go out and see some good bowling on the Pro Series, the shift times will be 10 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. for that event. Usually the 10 a.m. shift is contingent on the other shift filling up. And here's a Another great spare by Brian Kroll. One, two, seven, ten. Makes it look easy. And Brandon Marks with a nice bid on that four horseman right, but it just doesn't go for him. The ten pin caught it a little bit too full and didn't carry the ten. Brandon with a ten box. 
And Brian Kroll punches out one. But it doesn't really matter. That's a 166 game for him. He's going to be moving on to the semifinal round in this event. That brings up Sean Baker and Brian Purdy. On lanes five and six. As uh, Mark Smith and Dave Barber are still finishing up on lanes three and four. Because of all the marks that uh, Brandon and Brian were throwing, they've gotten a little bit ahead. Got a box ahead. So Sean Baker and Brian Purdy will, will get started with their second half. Sean has a 65 half, and Brian has 56 with a ball working, and he just filled it with seven, so that gives him a 63 half. And Brian with a nice bid on that triangle, but he just catches a little too much of the three pin, and the six remains. going to be a 10 box. So now Chris Bobear is up on lane 4 once again, and Jim Ayotte is up on lane 3. Chris has a lot of work to do because he's only got a 50 half, so he's really got to put some marks together if he wants to make the top half of the field. Although it's, the field is pretty much bunched up, so it's not, not impossible, but he's going to need a big half. Jim Ayotte with a 55 half, so he, he's got his work cut out for him as well. Meanwhile, take a look at this spare by Sean Baker. 5, 6, 10 with a couple of pieces of wood, and he plays it perfectly. Chris Bover with a nice bid on that split, but uh, not quite able to. Oh, wow, and Jim Ayotte nailed the 1 2 pocket on that four horsemen, but the seven pin refused to go. Sean Baker on the spare, drops nine. Seven pin with a couple of planks. Not likely to provide much of a challenge for him. Brian Purdy with a strike on lane five. Let's take a, a look at the replay. This is very similar to the other strike that he threw in the first half. One, two pocket, pin comes off the sidewall to trip out the six pin. That uh, one, two pocket seems to work really well with Brian's ball. John Baker working on the spare. He has got nine. Meanwhile, Jim Ayotte with a badly needed uh, couple of spares in a row over there. Let's see what Brian Purdy can do if he can get this uh, spare. No, he's going to fill that strike with an eight. And there's a, a nice ball by Chris Bover. Let's take another look at this strike. One three pocket, high flush, ten pins on the deck. Good ball by Chris. He really could use another one though if he wants to uh, wants to move on. So as we come toward the end of this. Oh, there's a great shot by Sean Baker. He had a three drop and converted it for a spare. And let's see. And a strike by Brian Purdy. 
And wow, a couple more strikes by Jim Ayotte and Sean Baker. So let's take a look at these these three strikes right in a row. Here's the one by Brian Purdy. Once again, the one-two pocket. And again, the six pin is the last to go. Really almost a carbon copy of the other two strikes that he had. And here's the, uh, the shot by Sean Baker. A little bit full on the one-two side. But he breaks down that split nicely. And the six pin tumbles into the three to put a strike on the board. And finally, this one by Jim Ayotte on lane three. High flush in the one three pocket. Not much to say about that one other than see you later. And that one is badly needed because Jim Ayotte is trying to catch the 123 posted by Brandon Marks. Jim has, what's he got? He's got 112. Uh, through the ninth, plus a strike. So he's got 112 with the uh, the strike bill, and he needs to just needs to put a decent bill on the strike in order to uh, to catch Brandon and probably grab the fourth spot in the in the next round. And he's got five, so that would give him that gives him enough right there because he's got. Uh, No, actually, it doesn't quite give him enough. But now he's got enough. The 7 gives him 119, and, and uh, a 7 box would give him 126. Brian Purdy finishing up with a 129. So you can see the scores here at the end of the, uh, the round of 8. The four bowlers that will be moving on to the next round are Brian Kroll with 166. Sean Baker 146, Ryan Purdy with 129, and Jim Ayotte 126. And you can see why that strike by Jim Ayotte at the end was so important. He needed, uh, actually he and, and Brian both needed those marks that they got at the end to uh, just to get past Brandon Marks' 123. So we will return with the round of four.